Hey hello everybody, my name is Cold Blue and I thought I'm missing a beat. I am jumping right back into the next game. And I actually think it's kinda cool because I'm following the same teams all the way through so you guys can get the illusion that you're watching the full entire tournament brackets. But this will be Wasabi versus Zone Skynet. Um they're going up in this uh, matchup. I think this is the semifinals now. Uh, let me go and bring up the bracket so you guys can see that for sure. OBS, where are you? There you are. Brackets turned on. Excuse me, that was very rude of me. Scroll on down to what we can see all throughout here, and we can see that right on over here we're watching Wasabi versus Zone Skynet. So, um, yeah, I'm not too sure what's up with the brackets, but we're watching Wasabi versus Zone Skynet, just know that much. Um, like I said, this is a semifinal, so we're going to be seeing the finals happen up next. So, holy crap, guys, we're getting close to the end of the day, and that is actually kind of exciting and kind of saddening. But I'm actually casting this from the spectator client because I had to go do something first, which is why you guys missed some of the first picks and first bands. So let me go ahead and start talking about this because I got a lot to talk about. I will say that much. So as far as the Wasabi goes, uh, Wasabi, they did ban out a Wisp. They did ban out the Bat Rider, the Lifestealer, and also the Razor. And I'm actually eating a, eating a icicle right now. It's really cool. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a name to call it. That won't sound bad. Ice Pop. That's what we're team pick. We're going to put it to the side because it's actually hindering progress. But as far as the bands on side of Wasabi, relatively standard bands except for the Razor. Razor's actually um, really good versus OD, so I guess they ban them out to prevent Zone Skynet from picking them versus that OD. Try to make sure they empower their OD as much as possible. Uh, moving over to the side of Zone Skynet, they ban out the Lone Druid, they ban out the Nyx Sass, and they ban out the Weaver, and they also ban out the Tinker. So with them ban out the Lone Druid, who's not necessarily the standard ban with air quotes, they allow the Dark Sea to get through. Actually, wait, hold on. They allowed the profit to get through. They allowed the profit to get through. But Wasabi, with them banning out the Wisp, they allowed the Dark Sea. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Dark Sea's not that big of an issue. Um, he's very known to deal with, yes, but I mean, so is everybody else in this whole entire game that we call Dota. Anywho, um, they banned on Tinker. Tinker, really nice um, global push. And if Wasabi were to pick him up, oh man, there'll be. I mean, like, I, I didn't. I don't see. I didn't see Wasabi picking up, or conceivably picking up a Tinker. But if they did, there'll be so much push on Wasabi's side that. The zone sky that would just get out pushed. They couldn't. They wouldn't be able to deal with them. Uh, the only thing that, that could help them would be a wisp or maybe even a slark. Cause slark is so freaking fast. But otherwise, I mean, they'll just get eaten alive as far as tower kills go. And uh, the game will probably be in about 30 minute mark. <coughs> oh, almost went down the wrong pipe. <coughs> Ten as far as the pickups go, uh, we see Zone Skynet, they, um, on their side they picked up the Naga, Darkseer, Kunkka, and Gyrocopter. I'm very excited to see the Kunkka pick up. Uh, Kunkka does really well versus OD. Kunkka doesn't necessarily need a lot of mana. Uh, he probably won't be able to kill OD, but OD won't be able to kill Kunkka per se, because Kunkka just has so much HP he doesn't, well, he doesn't have a ton of HP, but he, he does have a, more HP than OD in that sense. And uh, Kunkka doesn't need mana to make Five OD's life a living hell, so... He can just get the Tidebringer crits and just hit them all over the place. OD will be like, oh crap, I can't dodge it because I can't do anything about Astral Prison myself. Dire team and Kunga's like, yeah, you can go steal my intelligence. I don't care. I'm a, I'm a sailor. No offense to all the sailors out there. Or all the. <laughs> yes, no offense to all the sailors out there or people who ride boats for fun. But Kunga doesn't need mana to do anything important early on. So OD can do all the mana stealing he wants. Kunga will just seconds, be able to deal with him seconds, left, right, center. Now once OD gets his, uh, gets his level 6, Five he should be able to kill remaining. Kunga outright because Kunga would just be so stupid that he can't do anything against him. But we'll see that we'll see that play before our eyes, guys. We'll see that play before our eyes. Uh, meanwhile, as far as the pick, other pick, Gaur cut the pick up. A very solid carry. Not too surprised to see that. Um, he just basically give him enough room to farm. He'll farm up a whole bunch of stuff and kill everybody in like 5 hits. Especially, especially the supports. Who are Visage and Jakiro, who are relatively survivable supports, I'll put it that way. Visage has a great Cuba cloak, and Jakiro has some nice natural stats uh, as an intelligent support. Or, despite being an intelligent support. And the Windrunner is going to be the last pickup on Zone Skynet. Uh, she's going to be really nice for turning these fights around. As far as the bands, we see a Shadow Demon ban. Uh, Wasabi saw the fact that Shadow Demon would do relatively well versus someone like a Prophet. Or just be annoying to deal with at all, or altogether. Um, I actually, I, I don't see Versage having too much trouble dealing with the Shadow Demon. So, um, yeah, Prophet, he'd probably be the only one having a lot of trouble versus the Shadow Demon. 
But uh, he saw they saw the fact that Zone Skynet needed another support, so they did go ahead and ban it out. And uh, Zone Skynet did ban out the Alchemist, who's actually really powerful carry, but not as powerful as a Spectre. Spectre should be able to eat alive everybody on the side of Zone Skynet, hands down. Uh, if this game does go to about the 60 minute mark or 50 minute mark, or maybe even 45 minute mark. But before then, Spectre's gonna Spectre's gonna have to farm up quite a bit. So it's gonna be the responsibility of Zone Skynet. It's gonna be their absolute responsibility to make sure. That they kill the Spectre and make sure that Ezium or Ezum on that Spectre doesn't get enough room to have too much fun. Because if she does, she's going to make life not too fun for Zone Sky that I can say that much. <laughs> so while everybody's picking up the people, I'm going to take this opportunity to eat my uh, ice sickle, ice pop, whatever you guys want to call it. Ten, sec ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh, that's another thing. Sorry. Um, like I said, this game, uh, this is Team Chiba Sue's, um Dota 2 tournament. Uh, definitely go check out the Facebook page over here. Um, Facebook.com slash Chibas Minions. And yeah, check out the Facebook page, like their page, uh, comment. Let them know how much you enjoy this tournament because if you do, I'm pretty sure they'll be encouraged to do more tournaments like this and they'll be pretty happy to do it. Um, I would go like them on my own Facebook page, but I don't have a Facebook page anymore. Uh, my personal Facebook page I deactivated for personal reasons about three months ago, and uh, I don't have one for do my Dota stuff yet, which I do need to make one very soon. I do have a Twitter that I don't use. I just spam my videos. Like whenever I post a video, it automatically updates my Twitter. So if you guys do follow me on Twitter, thank you guys for up for putting up with all that Twitter spam. But I will start using my Twitter page um, to inform of important things. I guess technically. Sorry. I guess technically my videos are important, but, I mean, you, you don't need to know about all 20 videos I post in one day, I mean, that's, that's kind of obnoxious. Anywho, ooh, ooh, oh man, I, I, gotta, I gotta do this, hold on. So it's a shout out to the other spectator. The battle begins. Shout out to the other spectator here. I'm Caster from Dota TV, as you guys can see right there. And let me go ahead and do introductions because I totally, totally miss all of that. I start off with this Kunkka. Uh, we see, wow, okay, we see Age. That's what I call you Age. We see Age on that Kunkka. Moving over to this Windrunner, we see Just Fas. Just Fasu. Or j Just Fasu. On that Windrunner. Moving over to this Naga Siren. We see Genkin on her. Down bottom on this Gyrocopter who has an at symbol. So at Silar, level 4. Shout out to at Solid Eleven Four. Um, I'm not too sure if this is a Twitter page, but I always do try to give people as much as much screen time as I possibly can <clears throat> when I'm doing their introductions, so that people can go check out the Twitter page. If you guys do enjoy Garcutter's play, definitely go follow him on Twitter. Um, go check him out on I don't know. Does fa Facebook doesn't have ads? Yeah, just just check him out on Twitter or Pinterest or whatever he's using, and uh, say what's up. It's on Cool Blue sent you. Anywho, moving to the jungle. The last person is at Avachi Dota. I think I said Avachi. So. At Avicii, oh Avicii, right. At Avicii Dota, on that Dark Seer, he's actually doing a really good job stacking his camp and getting a, quite a bit of XP here. He's like, hey bro, you can do as much damage as you want to, but I'm going to kill all y'all first. And they're actually taking a lot of damage here. He's actually going to have to pop back and uh, salve up before he dies. He's actually taking a little bit more damage. There you go. He's fine, throws out a nice little iron shell and doing some nice, nice little farming. I'm taking notes, because I need, I need to learn how to do this effectively. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, on, the, on the enemy team. On the side of the Dyer, we have on the Wasabi side, we have Remy on the OD, who's actually taking quite a bit of damage. Kunkka doing quite a bit of work with that Tidebringer already. You guys can just see, OD has significantly less HX, well, he has no HP. Holy crap, guys, I can't see HP bars, it's not good. Might have to rejoin this game. <clears throat> but, uh, yes, that's, that's actually going to throw me off quite a bit, so let me, let me go ahead and rejoin this game. Hmm. I'm trying to hide things. Uh, you know what, it's fine, it's fine. Cause if I do leave the action on, not, nothing too big is happening right now. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and rejoin the game. Hope I can get the HP bars back up. Cause that's actually kind of, kind of distracting. So where are you? He is over here. Omni. Oh, I gotta leave the game first, don't I? Let's see where's the leave the game button? Where's the internet? I don't know how to use this newfound contraption. Let's see, watch game.
Yes, HP bars are back. Cool. Perfect. Double damage. So free cameras on. All right. So yes, um, continue introductions. I think I was on Remy on that OD. Moving over to the top, we can see Rain. Uh, Rain, who, be, who played a very impressive uh, Visage last game, so hopefully we see some more impressive things come out of him with his micro, with those familiars. Moving on to Jakiro, we see on or Omni, yeah. <laughs> oh god, butchering names, that's what I do, guys. Oh, we see Anmi, 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 Onmi. I want to say Omni, but I think I think it's I think it's uh, like in a in a different order, like the I should be on the end. Anyway, I should call you Oni. You see Oni, Oni. Oh, Jesus, gonna kill me. It's just killing my tongue. Own me, own me. Yes, I should call you Own, Own me, Own him, Own him. Right, Own him on that uh, Jakiro. Who shout out to him? He's the person I joined on. Uh, and last but uh, on the Spectre, we see Ezium. Gosh, more names I can't pronounce. That's all I should call you guys. The team of names I can't pronounce. There we go. I can pronounce that one. We have on this Nature Prophet. We have Meanie on him. Shout out to you, Beanie, for having a nice name that can easy to pronounce. And I think that runs up all the callouts, so. What's going on, mate? Kunka has an entire 169 mana pool, which is actually more than enough to go for kill top OD if he can land his Tidebringer. Or if, if he can land his Torrent. And OD is still taking quite a bit of damage coming out from that Tidebringer, coming out from Kunka. And Kunka's just having so much fun, he's waiting for it. And boom, goes the dynamite. No, it's not close enough to kill the, or hit the OD, so OD doesn't feel any damage from that. Charlene is up top. Uh, we have the uh, we have a Charlene of Spectre, OD, sorry, Spectre, Jakiro, and Basage. And they should be able to take his tower down pretty darn soon. Uh, we got rotators coming in already from both Darkseer and Windrunner. The two supports to protect this tower. Darkseer has himself a Haitian, so he can't use Surge to save the life of Windrunner if she so or if she so needs it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shaco does fly from Windrunner. It wasn't able to latch on top of uh, Basage, but if it was, they could have positioned Windrunner for a kill. So that's actually doing quite a bit of damage to Doxy already. Doxy, we'll just go ahead and back on the way. Uh, meanwhile, down bottom, we got the uh, tri lane of a zone something. Zone. Zone. Oh, 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 oh. God. oh no, I know this. I know this. I know this. It's it's zone. And I'm not just saying that because I'm looking it up. It's zone. Skynet. Yes, zone Skynet. I, I totally remember that. I memorized that. Uh, we have on the side of zone Skynet. Uh, we had the Gyrocopter, well, we had a tri lane, Gyrocopter plus uh, Windrunner plus Naga, but they did back away from it, uh, mainly because, well, there's nobody here really to defend. Um, yeah, so now now there's a Prophet, but Prophet can just TP in and TP out. Uh, he had to, uh, Meanie's actually building a Hand of Midas, so that's one thing to point out as well. So he's going for the standard Prophet build, uh, Hand of Midas, Hand of Midas, Shadow Blade, and then carry late game. Meanwhile, on top we have... When we're on body be going now, she's actually gonna eat herself a spectral dagger. That should be enough damage to kill her. No, it will not be enough damage. Uh, Darkseer actually surging away. Uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily think he needed to, but he did use a lot of his hatred on top. It looks like they try to go for a kill on something or he's just trying to juke away. Uh, meanwhile we have Just Foss. Or Just Foss who he's actually running around. Uh, he needs to be very careful because if he does get caught out again, I don't think he'll be able to survive. Uh, the damage coming out from Visage. Oh jeez, the damage coming out from Yeah, actually Visage, yeah, that's Shakira. The damage coming out from Visage is actually quite a bit. Especially when you consider soul subject charges. <clears throat> so one one needs to be very careful about that. And it's a beautiful a beautiful aggressive observer ward over here. And uh, the reason why this is an aggressive observer ward is because, well, it's placed in a very aggressive position. It's placed in a very forward position. And what this does for you whenever you're in your lane is it basically gives you vision and lets you know, okay, well oh man, I can't draw on the map. Darn it. Oh anyway. It lets you guys know who's coming to this general area, like if they're coming straight up, because a lot of ganks do come from this general area. Dying or if they're coming around to the side, it lets you see who's around that corner. We expect ulti to fly, we got just Fasu on that one runner, trying to run as fast as you possibly can. Meanwhile, we have Age on that Kuka, saying, <laughs> saying you know, just get all the ship, just, just abandon ship, trying to run as fast as you can. And uh, we got uh, four people, five people, four, actually four people for Zone Sky that already made. Kuka throwing a nice little bit of damage, 160 damage to OD, that's quite a bit of damage. And uh, it will be another 160 damage to OD. That's like a free nuke right there, which this Kuka just did uh, with those auto attacks. And uh, now everybody disperses again. Naga Siren's like, okay, I'm gonna go back down bottom, collect my levels. Gyro comes like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and continue attack his tower. Prophet trying to do what he can to defend. He's actually doing a decent job of it. Those trains are actually just free gold for Gyro comes though, so he needs to be very careful about that. Flat cannon equals free tree and gold. As far as the item build goes, uh, Gyro comes is gonna go for that jump of endurance. Which would be nice. Uh, Prophet, like I said, he's building for that hand of minus. Or he could be building power trades. I don't know. 
probably building that hand in mind. It's not just waiting around the corner. Trying to see if she can go for a kill from the top of the Prophet, but Prophet has already TP'd out. She does not know this, of course. And actually, this bottom lane should be going down very soon. Uh, just Fasu, or just Faus, on that one runner. She's here, help out, helping out with her single GG branch plus boots. And uh, yeah, as far as other interesting things to talk about, as far as the like, last into the nice go, you see Gyarcopter has crazy amounts of farm versus Spectre. Uh, Spectre does need quite a bit of farm, and she's not going to be able to have too much uh, of this going on. She does have her phase boots up, which is helping out with her damage, and also gives her illusions a little bit more damage, but she's not going to really be able to do anything um, until she gets her other items like a Diffuse Blade or maybe even a Radiance. But until then, until then, she's not going to be able to have too terribly much. She's actually taking a little bit of damage coming out from these creeps. She had, uh, I do like her build though, I do like the Max Desolate early, that's a lot of free damage, that means uh, once she does pop a reality, she'll actually be doing damage to people. Because a uh, 1 point, or sorry, 4 points in Desolate gives a free 65 damage, which if you want to put that into numbers, I think that's about the damage that a Battle Fury gives you. Uh, just the raw damage a Battle Fury gives you, which is, yep, 65 damage coming out from a Battle Fury. Of course it doesn't give you cleave with Desolate, but that's a free, six, that's a free Battle Fury she just got, minus the region, or mi minus all the details guys, you know, details, details, details. That's a free battle fury as far as the damage goes for Spectre if she just maxes her Desolate. Now of course that means she doesn't have more points inside of her Spectre Dyer's Dagger and also that means she doesn't have more points inside of her, des her Dispersion or stats. But, I mean she's, she's, looking to go, she's looking to be more involved in the middle game. Which I, honestly I question. I think Spectre needs to just go ahead and sit back and farm. Maybe build a hand of minus and just go for, that, go for the long haul and let her team just uh, defend everything. Because her team will be very good at defending things, especially with the Prophet. He'll be able to pop his ulti, he'll be able to push the lanes on the other sides, and he'll be able to handle the mid game. Uh, more or less, he'll probably be able to actually carry uh, for his team. But no, Spectre wants to be involved. Ezium going for that build of, uh, or going for that skill build of Desolate Maxed. And actually, look at all the damage coming off from Dark Sea. That's pure damage, by the way. Not too terribly much, but one Spectre does get a lot of attack. The actual Spectre is going to be on the one side. Uh, Jakiro does so with the Ice Pass. Ice Pass does miss it, and Passage throwing down the nuke. Not enough damage. We got TPs coming out. Spectre ulti to fly. It does get the kill right on top of Dark Seer, like I said before. Uh, that's why you want to have so many points inside of me. We got Mini getting caught with the net. Uh, now nah, I got taken a lot of damage. She's not going down just yet. Wouldn't know just Fox might be going down next. A uh, Sprout coming up from Profit will not be coming out. He doesn't have any points to Sprout. Buybacks from Jakiro. I'm uh, sorry, buybacks from Darkseid, buyback from Gyarcopter, and Windrunner will be running. She wants to chase his Prophet to the gates of hell, and actually she might be able to get the kill. Prophet throws out the Sprouts, or throws out the Treants, and now Gyarcopter comes in. He pops his Fly Cannon. Fly Cannon not popped just yet. He does not pop his Fly Cannon. He pops his, uh, <laughs> so he pops his Rocket Bars instead. Prophet trying to get as many, uh, as much of a body block as he possibly can, but Gyarcopter has Fade Juice. So he doesn't care. Prophet going to get caught inside the ulti just on the tail end. No, he just barely got caught on the outside of the ulti. He'll still be going out with the auto attack, so I think Gyarcraft just, just needs to attack a creep. He doesn't need to chase that far. He's going to chase that far anyway. Gyarcraft uh, is getting caught with the ice path from Jakiro. Meanwhile, we have the ulti from OD getting used on top of Kunkka. Kunkka still alive. Has his boat up, so he can't use it to engage the fight if he really needs to. And Gyarcopter, I think this is Gyarcopter on the side. Gyarcopter should be getting caught up. He's gonna go and pop his rocket for us, do what he can. Will he be able to make it alive? He will not be able to make it alive. A Kunkka boat might have been able to change it. Just a little bit, but not too terribly much. He did TP out. Kunkka, that is. Kunkka did TP out. Pull roots and run. What's the AoE on Centaur stun? Oh, it doesn't tell. 250 radius. So it's it's about the same radius as a uh, Dinjinor on Omni Knight. I think that's 400 radius attack. or something like that. It's a little bit smaller. Anyway, so in the middle. Of so as far as far as towers go, um, there's only been actually no tower. Yeah, there's only been one tower that went down, and that was this tower down here. So that means if you look at the goal graph, theoretically, the game should be tied. And let's see if that's true. No, the game is not tied right now. We have a Radiant's lot more farm going towards uh, Zone Skynet. Uh, Wasabi, they're, not, they're, they're doing well on farm. They have the profit. And once he gets his hand of minus, their goal is going to skyrocket. Oh, he has his hand of minus. So their goal is going to start skyrocketing. But they have lost. Actually, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, they haven't been farming as much as uh, Wasabi have been. Dyer's top tower is sorry, sorry. We're looking on one side. They haven't been farming as much as Zone Skynet have been. There you go. Oh, we got Kuka throwing on his torrent, throwing on his combination. Versace taking a lot of damage. He actually might be able to turn around, throw off the nuke. He throws the nuke on top. One runner, perfect choice for him. But really, Spectre's not going to be able to keep up with him. One runner will be getting a shotgun to a tree. Ezion caught in the worst way possible. Kuka bolt the fly, and will Ezion be running to it? No, he will not run to it. He gets himself Astro, Astro Prison by the OD. Very nice Astro Prison, very nice defensive one. And Kuka doing a massive amount of damage. Spectre just barely surviving. Holy crap, how are you still alive? 
Uh, meanwhile, we've got Kuka taking a lot of damage. He's actually down in creep aggro. He does finally go down. Uh, I didn't see who's. Oh, uh, somebody. Someone's gonna get that cool, but I didn't see who got it. Uh, Winner and the gun be going down too. The treants are just getting killed. Yeah, getting killed by creeps because creeps LP, please nerf. And so ends everything. Dire structures are fortified. Uh, the bottom tower was taking a lot of damage. Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter's pushing that lane. Doing what he does. Drums are up on him, so he's ready to go ahead and push some lanes like a boss. Jakiro Arcane Boots are up. Besides, nothing too big and fancy as far as the rest of the items go around the map. Darkseer has himself a soul ring, which is really useful. Getting that 12 minute mechanism, actually a little bit past the timing, of course, but he has been involved in fights. He has died once, and he has had, he does have two assists. And the courier doesn't have anything as far as the buckler goes, so. Darkseer, a, a, a little bit late on the um, mechanism. And I, I, I guess this is showing why uh, Wasabi are a little bit ahead. It's mainly because I want to say Darkseer and uh, Naga have been roaming a lot. Whoa, whoa, we got Prophet going down, down bottom. Kunk able to pick up the kill. Nice little combination coming for him. He threw boat. He looks like he threw boat. He threw torrent and uh, got himself a few tide bringers. And it's, it's it's not it's not the most difficult thing to land in the world. I will go ahead and state that out front. But you do have to be you do have to plan it out a little bit uh, when you're playing a Kunk. Um, like if you can throw out your Xbox or if you need to throw out your Xbox to spot on top of somebody and and then instantly throw your torrent. Uh, once you hear like the tone go up like a little bit, then throw a pop your Xbox spot again. It'll pull him back into the right spot, and then throw your boat. Of course, throw your boat while the X mark spot is still on them, after you throw your torrent, and you should be able to get the full Dyer's combination on them. Um, or what you can do, what I have done in my own experience, is I've thrown the torrent down on top of somebody, and like right when I know they're about to get a call on top of the torrent, I start being aggressive, run towards them, get an auto attack off, they're caught inside the torrent, so they're getting thrown up in the air, get another auto attack off while they're in the air, and then once they come back down, get another auto attack, and usually get skilled. You know, fight, fight breaking out top, Jakiro threw his, I, threw his uh, ulti in the wrong way, but actually he got a kill on top of Naga. Holy crap, Naga does go down to that. The derpiest death I've seen in quite a while. Besides guys with familiars, finally, this will be a dead Darkseer. Darkseer does go down. Me around the corner, Gyrocopter trying to run away. These guys are scattered out by the Observer Ward. They, did, they do see the Windrunner. They should just go for the Gyrocopter, because Gyrocopter is a much juicier target. He's built himself a Helmet of Dominator. He has no gold. He's going to go into the trees and try to TP. we got Spectre throw out the uh, Spectre Dagger. They do see everything. Skylar getting caught, or Skylar getting caught in the worst way possible. Goes down. Windrunner going to be next. She's for dinner next. Naga's not level 6 just yet, which is going to be huge. She could disengage this fight if she only she was level 6. Throws a net. That's really about it. OD says, screw that, bro. I'm going to go for a kill. Remy going to be in a little bit of trouble, actually. He's going to start running. Luckily, Naga doesn't really have all that much mana to do anything. And oh, look, a Shadow Blade for Kuka. So, as far as Kuka builds go, it uh, looks like he's going for a drum. Um, what I like to do whenever I play Kunkka, and the reason I keep throwing my experience in there is because I feel I feel I feel enlightened to know so much about Kunkka now. Um, I, li I like to go for um, Shadow Blade, and then I like to go for Chrysalis. It's it's extremely risky thing to do because you won't have any HP, and sometimes I do go for the Bracer first and then go for the Chrysalis. But I mean, it, it's probably not the most stable build mode. I'm going to admit that. But hey, Shadow Blade into Drums is a really nice combination, or a really nice transition. And then afterwards, he can transition into his uh, data list and all that fancy damage items and stuff. Dyer's top tower but as far as carrying a light game, though, I really, really do see Spectre just outright killing everybody Dyer's on the side of Zone Skynet. Um, especially when she's getting on this room. She's built a Radiance first, which will get, which will make her very vulnerable initially. But if she's gonna, if she's able to actually cash in and get a few kills off that. Um, then she's gonna be able to just be fine. Uh, she'll be able to have her survivable items later on. And I think these guys do realize that she's going for a, a, a radiance. They, we see rotations coming up top. Ezium, Ezium pops his ulti. He will be able to find himself a wild Naga all alone. TP's, co or TP's coming on right up front, top of Kunga. Kunga does get caught inside of a uh, ice pass, so he's going to get a pop shadow blade, trying to run away. Situ replace. Very nice planet coming up for Omni. Ulti coming up for Naga Sarin. Very, very, very late. Kunga's already dead. She's going to TP out while she can and takes her song with her. Meanwhile, we got Faust. Faust is going to be running as fast as she possibly can on that Windrunner. Trinket Boots actually a Windrunner instead of Faust. And uh, might not like what she look, not, might not like what she sees when she goes up that hill. Mechanism fully purchased by Darks here. That's going to be nice. It's, it's about four minutes off, but hey, we're, we're just like picking hairs right now. And we're just splitting hairs. So, four minutes off in this game. Not really all that big of an issue. Might have been able to save a life. Maybe just one life. Not, not too many. Not too many lives. Nah.
Do we see any stacking? No stacking being done on any side of the ancients. Uh, what you can do as a support if you don't know what you're doing, or if you don't, sorry, not if you don't know what you're doing, but if you don't have anything else to do, you can go and stack the ancients uh, for your carry. Uh, this would be really nice for a Gyarcopter, actually really nice for, for a Spectre as well, because a Spectre's Dispersion, I think it does hurt magic immune units. Yeah, it's pure, oh wow, it's pure damage. Man, I didn't know it was period damage. Whoa, that was ridiculous. So that means you can't do it. You can't really do much too much about it. Kuka try and get an Xbox spot. Spectre juking around the corner. Kuka says, screw that. I'm just do an auto attack on the creeps. You saw how much damage Spectre just took. She didn't take all that damage, but she did take quite a bit. And Kuka's getting so many crits right now. Or sorry, getting so much damage right now. Just kiting the wave, killing it. And it all goes down. Once again, an illusion rune down bottom. I'm not too sure how many illusion runes we've seen so far, but I think that's like the 20th illusion rune. Going to TP scroll purchase. Who's this around the corner? Besides this familiar scout out around the uh, secret shop, looking for a curry to kill, but the curry has already been back to base. Nobody really truly here to kill. And uh, Rain on that besides is actually scout or he's just familiar to try to scout out. We see the fight breaking around the corner. We got Ezium on that spectre juking around the corner, doing a very nice job getting out of the net. We all got Jakira ult again flowing around. A uh, big big boat coming out from Kuga. We'll be able to cut to the Visage of is still moving a little bit fast because he has that drum charge on top of him. But he does still go down. OD. OD does not have a mechanism, so he's not really lost survival, but he did go for more damage. The Spectre getting caught with a beautiful shot coming from Lunar. From downtown, Garcops are able to dunk her right into the grave. Um, you know, we got Dark Tier trying to chase uh, chasing his Prophet as much as he possibly can. Prophet doesn't have his hand, uh, doesn't have his uh, Shadow Blade up yet. He really wishes that he could use his hand of Midas right now. But he's gonna go ahead and start TPing out. He will be able to make it out alive. Safe! This is exactly what they just said, and the only person left is a OD, of course, and OD will be going out here very soon. He can't use Astro Prism on top of himself, or actually he's going to go for a kill on top of Garakov instead. He does use Astro Prism on top of himself, dodging a little bit of damage, and he should be able to survive. Wow. Is under attack. Well played, and the mechanism is coming up on OD as well. So there'll be a mechanism on OD, and there'll also be a mechanism on... Oh, never mind, they're, they're opposite sides of the team. Dyer's okay. top tower is <clears> under attack. Never mind, guys, ignore me. Ignore Kublu. He's, like I said, still drunk. He's always drunk. I, I don't drink, by the way, guys. I don't. I don't condone drinking. It's it's a personal preference, and it should stay a personal preference. It shouldn't like be against a lot of drink. Some people are funny when they drink. Some people are just disgusting. You guys know what I mean. Anywho, so as far as OD's build goes, um, the reason why I don't like going for the double null talisman, or I, I don't. The reason why I don't like seeing personally the double null talisman. Is because it gives you it, gives, it doesn't really give all that much. I mean, yeah, sure, it give you a tiny bit for now, but later on you're gonna end up selling an old talisman anyway. And this essentially delays OD's uh, mechanism by almost exactly the amount of gold that a null talisman costs. Because I think a null talisman is the cheapest one of those items, and it costs 470 gold. Add that up to uh, 600 gold right now, and that's pretty much a mechanism finished already. Um, instead, I like to see uh, the the buckler. I think the buckler gives them exactly what a, a null talisman gives them, minus three stats or whatever, it gives him armor, it gives him some nice stats, it also gives him the ability to pop that and give himself three stats. And anyway, we got Spectre, as he am on that Spectre, getting caught in the worst way possible, getting hit with everything, chain stuns coming out from Kuka, Kuka from downtown once, or not, not once again, just, just dunking the Spectre right into the grave. And that's going to delay Spectre's uh, radiance by quite a bit, she actually almost had the gold for it. I think right now is the time for her to just go ahead and say, hey, you know, screw it, I'm going to build a defusal and just go for it. She has almost enough gold to build a full defusal, level one. Because the fuse level one costs three thousand three hundred gold, unless Val changed it up on me, which I really do hope. No, yeah, there we go. Three three thousand three hundred gold, which will help her be more effective in these fights, um, as far as doing damage, and also help out her um, her illusions as far as their damage output. But the radiance, I, I don't see the radiance being effective anymore, especially since now. If you want to look at the items on everybody, you see the items on the side of uh, Zone Skynet, which is on the radiance side. You see their items are actually. More geared towards survivability. Garcopter, he's or he's, he's built a back BKB. Um, yes, he did build the Mithril Hammer first, which was more damage oriented as opposed to survivability. But you guys get the point. Um, Garcopter's built himself a BKB, so his BKB is almost finished. Once that's finished, he won't care anymore. Ah uh, man, Kuka got himself a kill on top of Prophet. Kuka kills Prophet with a uh, Torrent plus Auto Attack, and Torrent's cool. That's 12 seconds, by the way. That's actually kind of cool. And it's a Chrysalis coming up on Kuka. It's so like I said, this is this is like this is the type of build I like to see. Cause it's fun. It's more damage. As far as playing a Kunky, you want to go for cheap, quick to get damage. And uh, Chrysalis gives you some nice damage. MKB gives you damage as well. But uh, it's it's been my one of my friends' assessments that if you get a if you compare the damage that you get from MKB, which is 88 attack speed or 88 88 damage plus true sight too, 
and you compare it to a, a, da a chrysalis, and you compare the damage that you get from both of them, um, over time, they'll both do pretty much the same exact damage. Now, of course, there are probably some stipulations in there, whereas you have to do like a certain amount of damage in order for it to match out like that. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Chrysalis is cooler. It builds into a Daedalus. That's just me being a fanboy of uh, Daedalus, by the way. So, anyway, um, my point for bringing out the atoms, though, was to show you guys that, that zone, that zone Skynet are getting past that point. They're getting past that awkward point where they don't really have the survivable items, but they're get, they're working on them. Like, uh, if you look at Gyrocopter, he's working on the BKB. The um, expect the war to have her, expect the war to have a Radiance right now. Um, actually, if expect the war to have a Radiance three minutes ago. Uh, Gyrocopter will be taking quite a bit of damage. It will be, it will be more significant for Gyrocopter, or for her to have that. Then, as opposed to now, because now it doesn't really matter, because Gyarcon's gonna have a BKB, so he's gonna he's gonna have more HP anyway. It's gonna take that Radiance like three additional seconds to do the same amount of damage that Gyarcon would would have taken otherwise if he didn't have it anyway. We see a fight about to happen on top. We got a Ice Pack getting thrown by Jakiro. It does miss everything. It so does a shackle from Moon Runner. It did not shackle. It did not latch on top of OD. So no true. No true moment to engage. We got Darkseid with the Envis room, which actually might be huge. He actually th turns around, throws out a, uh, <clears throat> throws out. So he throws out a, uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Iron Shell right on top of Kuka. Uh, OD throws out, throws out an Astral Prism right on top of himself. He will be getting hit with the bow. He walks right into it. Oh uh, man, not the best thing to walk into it. Darkseid trying to, trying to do what he can to stay survivable. Kuka actually keeping him alive right now. Uh, I'll, t I'll explain that. I'll explain that to you guys in a few seconds. And we got Kuka. Who could go be on Mechanos on live? Naga popping an ulti. Gyarcom wants to go in for a fight. I don't think he should go in for a fight, but he's gonna go in for it anyway. Mechanos will pop instantly by OD, and now Siler instantly regrets his decision, immediately regrets his decision. <clears throat> just Fosu, he's gonna be running away as well. And I think everybody should have disengaged that fight completely. Mechanism was still up on OD. OD did not use his ulti yet. Uh, you had <coughs> Jakiro's ice pass was could still be thrown out. Jakiro's ulti still up, which I don't Radiant's think is the biggest thing in the world, but I mean it's still there. Radiant's middle tower has and fallen. yeah, they, they should have just all backed out. Gyrocopter said, hey, I'm going full man mode. I'm gonna do this. I got my BKB, I don't care. And he donates gold to the cause of Wasabi. <coughs> That was a weird sound. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was OD, right. Oh, I was, I was trying to find out where that weird sound was coming from. <coughs> Man, excuse me. Alright, ulti coming out from Jakiro. Just, just looking pretty on the map. That's all I was doing. Nice little flame effects. Uh, beautiful vacuum coming off of Darkseid, but no wall to finish off. Kuka bolt the fly. It's a little bit off timing, but it doesn't matter. They got a kill on top of Versace anyway. Ice pack coming off from Jakiro. Gyarcraft could have popped his BKB if he wanted to, but that would have wasted a whole entire BKB charge. And we got Jakiro on the run. On, er, on me. On me. Is uh, running as fast as possible again. He will be on Mikael's line. No Xbox spot coming off of Kuka. Holy crap, Jakiro will be going down. Now he's feeling too happy about that. He goes down. Big plays coming off of Kuka, saying, I, I mean, I'd be able to stun you, but I will not let you run away. <coughs> Shotgun shot coming off from one runner. It did latch on top of uh, Spectre. Spectre's taking a massive amount of damage. One crit from Kuka, and there's a dead Spectre. Spectre does go back home. Spectre was able to TP out fast enough. I think she's auto attack chasing her right now. I think it, it probably missed already. Bottom tower does get denied by Kuka. <coughs> and I, I didn't realize Spectre was TPing out, but yes, that TP was just barely on point. Uh, one, like... One more split second, she would've went down. <coughs> no helmet to dominate to finish up just yet for Siler on that Gaur Cutter. Looks like he's working on it. BKB much more important in this specific matchup. Um, special versus the OD, that's all his damage. Meanwhile on top, who is this? This is a uh, Spectre once he- No, not Spectre, this is a Darkseer. Darkseer doesn't really care about getting cut out. But Darkseer needs to be really careful. No Diffuse Blade on top of Spectre just yet. She's still trying to build that Radiance. And Darkseer's getting- uh, Got Collins on Ice Pack. Pops and Mechanisms, doesn't matter. Too much, too much deeps. Too many deeps coming into him. <clears throat> Inspector almost has a her, almost has a radiance, or almost has a relic for the radiance. She just needs like 100 more gold. And yes. Oh, oh. Also, to um, to continue to beat a dead horse, not because I could do an animal cruelty, but because it's a good phrase to use. Um, actually, hold on, Familiar's about to go down, besides Familiar's, one goes down, the other one goes down, Gyrocopter gets both sets of gold, so a lot of gold going towards his calls. Anyway, um, flat damage. Flat damage is good in the early game. Flat damage is not necessarily all that great in the late game. Now, of course, with Spectre, it will, it will be persistent flat damage, uh, coming up from the, from the Radiance, 
and also give her give her illusion some nice damage coming out from the bonus damage, which I think illusions do get raw damage from items. I'm not too sure. I need to go look up. I need to go look that up. But uh, another thing, but one thing to consider as well is that uh, flat damage doesn't scale because it's flat. That's why I call it flat damage. I don't call it percentage or scaling damage. And uh, in the late game, people are really survivable. Like Darkseid has a mechanism. He probably he'll probably build a pipe soon, so he'll be taking less damage from that magic damage coming out from the radiance. Garakops has a BKB. Windrunner she has a Urn of Shadows. Kunka he has a well, he had a bracer. He is he's building a BKB. So he's working on a bigger and better strength items, and he'll have more HP. He'll be more survivable. And Spectre's radiance is coming at a very very late time. Like it's it's slowly but surely getting past that awkward time period where people are in between their survival items like BKBs or like drums or like Urn of Shadows and Four Staffs and Bears. Oh my! Smoke Gang coming up top. Looks like it will be achieving nothing but they will be trying to go for it anyway. Besides throws out a stun, sees himself a Kunkka Illusion and they're gonna go ahead and rotate towards the jungle. If they do they will be down. Jakira is actually coming around the corner. He finds himself a win on a win on a shackle to a tree. Boom! It lands, and Spectre ulted to fly, the fight will be happening on the corner, meanwhile on top, who is this going down? That will be a Visage going down, pretty not fast, Naga ulti not used, I thought I saw these, there we go, it will be used, catching out everybody else, beautiful initiation coming up for these guys, these guys will be able to go for a free kill, Gaga, the pop is ulti, I'm sorry, pop is BKB way too soon, but he popped it nonetheless, and there's a lot of damage getting done, Gaga is just standing in the middle and saying, I'm a man, I'm gonna kill all y'all bros, and Kuka says, no bro, I got this kill for you, I got these kills, and it should be GG here, or not GG here very soon, but this should be a, this should be a tower. Bottom tower is under attack. Which actually is not, uh, I forgot there's a prophet. Yes, there's a prophet on the map, guys. <clears throat> and he's working on Sheepstick, too. But yes, um, okay, okay. I, I totally forgot there's a prophet on the map, which is, I guess, good and bad. It's good in the sense that prophet's playing low-key. He's just doing, he's doing his job in the background, just trying to push it all he can. It's also bad in the sense that he's not making his presence known. He's not really pushing all the lanes. He's not forcing Radiant's these guys to go back and do stuff. Dyer's top he's just, tower has fallen. just another hero on the map. He's another Radiant's neutral group. Middle tower is under attack. But he did get the bottom tower for his team. So that will be a nice victory for them. That means they're only down by, what, instead of being down by X amount of towers, they're down by X minus one amount of towers. So just really fast in the middle of the cast, I know, huh, that rhymed. Holy crap, I should, I should make that like, uh, my catchphrase. Just really fast in the middle of the cast, I'm gonna let you guys know that you guys should definitely go check out the Facebook page of Team Chibisu, which as you guys see over there, on this overlay right in that general area. Uh, Facebook.com slash Chiba's Minions, and we got Kuka found himself a Prophet, this is gonna be a lot of damage going to Prophet, Prophet does get hit with the dust of appearance, and he's actually gonna be taking all the damage world, Kuka gives himself a kill, says I'm a man, I'm better than you bro, gets a kill, crit plus another set of damage, and there's a, there's a Prophet overboard, and Kuka says I'm gonna claim all, I'm gonna take all this. Oh yes, it's starting to get so far. Kunka's becoming scary, and that's a scary thing. When, when a Kunka becomes scary, that's even scarier, because uh, see, see, when the carries become carry, or carries become carry, when carries become scary, like an anti mage, she's like, oh man, anti mage is gonna, you know, just pop in, mage style, and kill everything. It's like, oh man, so much, so much cleave and blah blah blah. But Kunka's a scarier type of cleave, because this cleave reaches much further, and if he builds enough damage. He's just gonna do so much, it's not even funny. You know, besides getting caught in the worst way possible, he's gonna be going down. Kuka gets the kill. And like I said before, K and Kuka has so much CC, it's not even funny. If he can land it, it just it just makes you useless. You can't do anything. He's off the side, he's, he was just chilling out next to his tower. Kuka just casually walked on up in this. Oh, darn it. Kuka just casually walked up in this general area. Besides, is right over here in that general area. He couldn't get away. He wasn't, he wasn't far back enough. So the question becomes, how far back do you have to play as a support? The answer to that is, as far back as you possibly can, the fountain. If it's, if you can, if you can still hit them and be at the fountain, then the fountain. So Chikiro throws out his ulti, Spectre's popping her ulti as well. These guys do want to go for a kill, Naga ulti to fly. And this is going to be disengaged all this fight. Spectre's not going to be really useful on that. Gara comes to ulti to fly. Uh, it, will not, it will miss everything now, so does the vote from Koka. Naga a little bit too early in the ulti, or in the ulti. OD coming out with his ulti as well. I just said ulti like 20 times already. Not too sure. Not too sure what to say. And Astral Prisoner coming out from 
OD we're on top of Kuka, and Kuka's actually on mana right now. I'm expecting the Naga will be going out to the Massage and or to the OD. And OD's actually turning around, trying to go for the main fight. He wants to go for the kill right on top of Just Fossil. Just Fossil should be going out here very soon. Pure damage can should be able to go through Windrunner. And Jakiro actually got the kill on top of Windrunner instead with that burn damage. Macro probably OP. That's only level on Macro probably of all things. And is there a gym? I think I saw a gym. Or maybe it just dropped a sentry. Spectre, Radiance, not really finished just yet. She needs about 200 more gold, if I'm not mistaken. Which I am mistaken. She needs about 300 and 300 more gold. So once she once she has that um, Radiance up, she'll be able to you know show up and burn people. That's really about it. But at this point, honestly, I, I don't think a Radiance is going to change too terribly much uh, because. Zone just has so much room to do everything. Uh, yeah, sure. Wasabi do have a profit on the side, and profit can still do a split push thing. But profit hasn't really been split pushing all that much, and he's working on what is he working on? He's working on a sheep stick. Uh, so, so he he won't have that millstone to help him push that much faster. He won't have the desolator to help him do more damage to enemies, and also he won't be having the desolator to help him destroy rip towers out of the ground. So all he has really is a shadow blade and ultimate orb. So he has shadow blade and plus ten damage. And well, plus ten everything else too, but just you know, shadow blade plus ten damage and mana and HP. That's really about it. So really, the question becomes is how like it. What has Prophet been doing this whole entire game? And uh, it, it it doesn't necessarily boil it down to that, but it's it's just Prophet needs to, Prophet needed to give his team more room to farm. He needed to give his Spectre more room because we're starting to become to that point. We're starting to get we're getting close and close to that forty minute forty five minute mark that I stated before. Where Spectre starts becoming that much more effective, and she starts becoming that much more scary. But she doesn't have any room to farm. She doesn't have any room. Like she's running away from a Kunkka. Like it, it's 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 getting to that point. And Kunkka's actually Kunkka's actually still searching for him. He says, "Hey, Spectre got away." He runs away, and casually proceeds on with his day. Spectre does have a radiance fully finished. MKB is already up on Gyrocopter, and just compare those two things. One is damage. The other one is damage as well. Spectre, she gets free burn damage whenever these fights do break out. Gyrocopter, he gets free 88 damage on everybody, plus true damage, so he's no evasion. Uh, whenever he throws on his flat cannon. I mean, it's... If you compare the two carries to each other, Gyrocopter is severely out-farming the Spectre. Look at the net worth. Spectre's actually worth less than the Prophet, who hasn't necessarily been doing the um, biggest to push, or best to push job right now. We got OD taking a lot of damage. He's not dead just yet, but he will be dead very soon. Gyro comes ult to the fly. He needs to go Astro Prism himself, but no, he decides not to. It's actually on pull down. Um, Meanwhile, we got Kunga Boat to fly. Kunga Boat will be missing everything because everything just died right under it. And that was a kill right on top of Spectre. Of all people to die, Spectre was the first one to die. And that is actually painful because Spectre needs to be survive, or needs to survive for as long as possible. Not ult to the fly. These guys do want to go for the kill on top of something, and they won't be able to find anything. And Versailles Illusions, or sorry, Versailles Familiars will be chasing this uh, Naga. Naga should be going out here very soon. She can't buy back if she needs to. But she, actually, no, she needs to. She needs to buy back and defend the bottom rank. Actually, she can't buy back. Oh. Meanwhile, Prophet back door, like a boss. Well, he should, or what he should be doing this whole entire thing. It's, instead of being so involved in the fights. And we got TP's coming up on one order. Buyback coming up on Naga as well. Dust of appearance was popped. Kunkka is spotted out. And he's actually getting chased to the gates of hell. Then we got, <coughs> we got Massage, or not Massage. We got OD turning around, getting himself a kill right on top of, right on top of Kunkka. No, Jahira got the kill on top of Kunkka. But he did survive. That's the only important thing. And the gym was purchased up on top of him as well. So he was a very important target. And uh, he survives. I just heard Prophet. I just, I just heard Prophet sprout. He did sprout. Okay. Prophet sprouted. He gets some treants. Big surprise here. And yeah, down bottom, who's this Kunkka just hanging out with the Naga illusion? Saying, hey, let's go push stuff. Uh, I, I want to see Kunkka go ahead and finish his Daedalus. He should have had the gold already. I think, I think he bought back and he died. Or he died and then he bought back. So that cost quite a bit of gold. Oh, Jesus, he died for 905 gold, guys. That is a lot of gold to die for. So Jakiro just bought himself something pretty, that's right guys. Jakiro bought himself a Sanj. Or Sange. I like Sanj. Sanj sounds cooler. Chief Stick purchased some on top of Prophet, and that's gonna be really, really important when they're face when they're fighting up against a Gyrocopter. Um Kunka, yeah, you can use on Kunka, and Kunka's gonna be critting the crap out of you. But if I had to choose between stopping a Kunka from attacking me and stopping a Gyro from from attacking me, I will pick the Gyrocopter. Um 
honestly, th their decisions might be that much more split because Naga can just pop Rolte if things do go that bad. So they might have, they might end up having to use a sheep stick on Naga and try to deal with the uh, Kunkka plus the Gyrocopter. Unless Naga initiates with the song, then they can go ahead and try to kill the Kunkka or use use the sheep stick to focus on the Kunkka or focus on the uh, Gyrocopter. But it's gonna take a lot of coordination. I'm just gonna say that out front. Kunkka right here. Kunkka crit in the creep wave. Oh, no crits yet. And a TP on the side. Prophet wants to go ahead and kill his top tower. He can. He needs to go ahead and pop sprouts. He sees that everybody's up top, so he's gonna go ahead and push, do his job, push that lane, push that lane. He has his uh, allies over side. Spectre farming with her radiance. Radiance is gonna be burning everybody up a little bit. Not gonna be doing too terribly much damage. Maybe one or be all in person to go down, but she can surge away. And double kill goes out for Kunkka. He got to kill on top of Shakira, got to kill on top of OD, all people left here to defend. And we got Spectre coming uh, around the corner. She got to kill on top, of, on top of that Naga. And actually, she might be going out here very soon. She will be going out here very soon. Uh, Kunkka is able to help her kill her with everything that he just had. And Dark Tear surged in a way while he can. Or he surged somebody else. He surged to Kunkka. Kunkka wants to go for the kill on top of this on top of this Visage. Visage does go now. Familiar is not going to be able to do anything but stun the ground. And that's about it. Kunkka taking a little bit of damage coming up from the towers. Prophet got a sheep stick. Again, or may maybe he just picked it up. Not too sure. She's still getting used on top of a profit. Profit. Well, he's gonna turn around. And use she's stick on top of Kukin. Maybe. Nope. Doesn't matter. Boat comes out. Boat does land. Beautiful vacuum boat combination. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Kukin's still alive. He's still running away. GG's getting thrown out. Profit saying, "Hey, we tap out. We're done with this." And I actually need to go check the practice so I can see. So I need to go check the chat. I mean. Yes, and that's the new game, guys. Uh, I'm gonna make it sweet and short. Um, this game was, but uh, this was the Team GB Series Dota 2 tournament. Um, this is qualifier number three. Like I said, go check them out on their Facebook page. It has been posted up on the side that stands for facebookcom Chiba's Minions. Go check it out. Tell them, hey, what's up? And tell them how much you enjoyed the tournament. Like their page, do all that fancy stuff. But definitely tell them how much you liked the tournament because you want to see them. You want to see them have more of these because I know I do. Uh, anyway, more opportunities for us to cast, right? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the cast, and I'll see you guys whenever.